I'm Chris Dangerfield, still got a sore throat, still got me lemon, honey and ginger. It's like a lem sip without the bit that works. <laughs> so, check it. Harry Houdini. Um, I've got a secret. A secret? Is, well, it's no longer a secret, is it? There's no such thing as secrets, is there? Because you need to share them to make them real. But as soon as you've shared it, it's no longer a secret. Yeah, I'm just throwing paradoxes out. Straight away, bang. No time No time to rest here. Harry Houdini, incredible man, an escape artist, an escapologist. Back in the old days, when I'd done my GCSE oral exam, I spoke about Harry Houdini. And it was easy because I really liked him. Real name, Eric Weiss. Born in Wisconsin. I'm just remembering this. Which, well, that's kind of the same of anything you say, isn't it? But I'm remembering it from back then. I haven't suddenly done my research. A really amazing man. Toured the world with his escape artist stuff. You know, would put on the most amazing shows and people would crowd to see him. You know, no telly then. It was all about theatre. You know, no movies. And what an act. One of the things they'd do, he'd done this one where he was put in a, put in a, like a sack and it was all chained up and they threw him into the Hudson in New York. And of course, he's got out of there in no time. He's not going to fuck about actually trying to get out. He's not picking locks. <laughs> no, no, no. He's out. But instead of just coming up and going, da-da, he swims under the water, goes out of sight, comes up, takes a few breaths as a fag, checks out the uh, racing fixtures, decides his time, back down, swims back round. <gasps> and they've got people on the side going, a human being cannot survive this long without air. This is awful. Harry is probably dead. It's been three minutes and counting. Of course, when he comes up, not only has he escaped certain death being in a chained up bag in the Hudson, but he, he, you cannot stay under water that long. The answer is, of course, he wasn't, but that's the beauty of a good show, of a good trick, of a good illusion. That's what an illusion is. Amazing, Harry Houdini. And I have to, while I'm here, props to, props to Yuri Geller. Uri, Uri Geller. Remember when he was on, excuse me. Remember when he was on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And he was going, oh yeah, I'm a very good friend of Michael Jackson. And then he went, oh, it's Michael's birthday today. <laughs> Wrong day, great friends. <laughs> if you're going to call it, get it right. <laughs> but Yuri Geller, look at him. Multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Toured the world, world celebrity. Knows all the stars. How? One magic trick. Can't knock it. One trick. Bending fucking spoons. It's not even his trick. It's an easy trick. I can do it. Maybe I'll do it here one day for you. He toured the world on it. He made millions off of the back of one trick. It's incredible. Uh, admittedly, once he'd established himself, he varied slightly. I like the one where, where he... Where he um, well, he takes credit after the event. <laughs> there was a World Cup and they were playing his country. England were playing his lot. I can't remember. I don't know where he's from. Iranian, maybe. And uh, when Beckham went to take the penalty, the ball moved slightly. The wind blew it. And after the event, Yuri Geller said, I concentrated on the ball. I said, no, move, move. And it moved. <laughs> Guess what i done? I really thought about it a few years back. And I had two aeroplanes flying to the World Trade Centre. Nonsense. But Geller, say what you want, toured the world, made a packet, one trick. Incredible. Houdini, slightly different class. He spent a lot of his time debunking uh, spiritualists as well, like mysticism and fucking seances, all that stuff with his missus. What, what, what a spectacular character. Look into him, it's really good. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good stuff. I don't know if they've made a movie about him, but, well, they obviously haven't made a very good one. I would have known about it, but poor lad died. He died doing his trick, the Chinese water torture, strung upside down by your ankles in a in a tank of water. But only because Houdini had this thing, he could take any punch in the belly. It's not that difficult. I can take a fair amount, but if you train like he did, because he had to, he could take any punch in the belly. And the night he was meant to be performing, well, the night he did perform, that fateful final performance, someone, someone in the crowd went, yeah, you, you reckon you can take a punch in the stomach? And he was like, yeah, and they went, bow, before he had a chance to prepare. You know, just tense up, basically. Appendicitis set in, hanging upside down in the water tank, drrr, drums going, brrr, tension, yeah, they pulled the curtains, he was blue. Hmm. Awful, really. 
but you got to go somehow. But my relationship with magic is a is a dark and dark, a dark and desperate story. It's my secret hobby. I'll still go on YouTube in the early hours and like watch a bit of card country. And I like all that stuff. I like the cards. I like the coins. I like the stuff that you can do with stuff in your hands. Don't get me wrong. I like about two percent of the whole world of magic, but that two percent I really like. I don't like all that. I don't like the way magicians do all that. I don't like that stupid dynamo. If you checked him out, uh, I'm like a, a, a really stupid, uh, you know, mateless freak, so I learnt magic to get friends. <laughs> Let's have a little look at dynamo. I, I timed this for a bit later, but uh, come on, YouTube, don't fuck me up. Here we go, check him out. Listen. Sometimes I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. The amazing people on the beaches of Miami isn't bad for a kid from Bradford. But it wasn't always like this. <laughs> he can barely talk with the way they've subtitled him. To where it all began. I grew up on Delta Estate in Bradford. I can't even understand what he's saying when it's in English. Fuck, fuck dynamo but that's what you get you get weird kids get into it i noticed that i used to go to a magic club more about that in a bit but it's kind of like even uh, darren brown said it on his program he said you know kids who, who struggle to get on with people and to communicate usually with women or in darren brown's case men you know so they they get a hobby i can assure you i weren't like that i was averagely popular before if anything i lost friends through getting into it but what I used to do, I used to get the old Red Bus Rover. Anyone lives around London, do you remember that? This is going back to what? Well, uh, I was 11 years old, so about 83. The Red Bus Rover ticket, the original travel card, 60 pence. 60p, and you could get any Red Bus as many times as you want. I'd get the 96 from outside Dartford Library to uh, Woolwich, Woolwich uh, bus station, change, get the 53 up to... Trafalgar Square take about two and a half hours, <laughs> and I'd only have about a pound left. That was my that was my weekly pocket money, two quid. So with that, with the one forty left, I'd get an apple and a can of coke, living it, and whatever I could borrow from the market stalls. But I'd come up here mainly. I'd go to Covent Garden and and watch all the street performers. I'd come to Soho and look in windows and uh, and then I'd go to the magic shops Alan Allen up on Southampton Row used to be next to the Bonington Hotel little midget bloke he was an escape artist look him up online not a nice man I remember once he had this little trick and I asked him to demo it and he had one on his desk like at the shop at the counter and he picked it up and it was all grubby it had like nicotine stains and shit on it and he cleaned it in his mouth oh, imagine when you're 11 years old he went oh hang on I'll show you that Scratch it, little. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I don't really want to look at that. <laughs> Thanks, anyway, Alan Allen. And the, uh, then there was Clark and Well Magic in Clark and Well. No, International Magic, it might have been called in Clark and Well. That's still there. And Davenport's, which was in the underground at Charing Cross, and that's still there too. And you know, I was one of those little leechy kids with nothing else to do, standing in the shop all day, not spending. <laughs> Met some wicked people, though, all real weirdos that I never want to see again. But I, 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 you know, I didn't want to keep having to come up to town to, to engage with other magicians. And I had a friend, Patrick, and he was sort of into it, but he was a bit hesitant. And once around his house, I said to him, Patrick, I get the feeling you, you, know, you, you don't really want to sort of get into magic. And I was only a kid, and his mum came in and she said, the thing is, Chris, I don't, I've, I've told Patrick I don't want him in those circles because there's some very dodgy people. <laughs> How right she was! How right she was. This is about to take a dark turn. So I write to the magic circle, yeah? Ooh, and I'm like, hello, my name's Christopher, and I wish to be an, a magician one day. Uh, I know I'm not good enough to be in the magic circle, but I was wondering if you knew any magicians. I might as well have just said, does any of your mates want to fuck a child? <laughs> I was wondering if there's any magicians around my area that might want to take me under their wing. Fuck me. <laughs> So I wrote to them, they wrote back, and they were like, oh, hello, Christopher, on this headed paper. I was like, but mum, mum, the magic circle around for me. And dear Christopher, as, ooh, as, as you are the new, the next Fengali, perhaps. I mean, some bullshit. However, there is a magic club in your town. Wow, over the moon. Terry and Martin, that was their names. Don't know the surnames. The dad was Terry, the son was Martin. So that was in the north, the other, uh, West Dartford. So I used to walk up there, Broomhill Road, little scout hut. You know the one, stink of piss. There's something about those rooms. You don't get them anymore. These days it smells of death hole, but in those days it was just warm piss. And as soon as they put the radiators on, it was warm piss and burning dust. And that's really my childhood in a nasty nasal nutshell. So I used to go up there, 
and they were all freaks. You know, they really were. They'd sort of sit there and go, uh, yes, I bought the uh, the wooden Supremo dice box. Uh, it's got a nice action, a nice show. I think I will use the um, the El Dorado presentation when uh, I will be using this at the uh, London uh, Theatre one day. And the other one would go, oh, I like that. I, have you seen it? And I was like, I, I, oh, this isn't right. But I must admit, even then, I thought, you know what? I'll have it off here being a magician because if this is a competition, this is a special needs convention <laughs> you know maybe they thought the same about me oh, i'm being generous of course they didn't they looked up to me because i had a slight bit of character and i could string four words together anyway who's the bigger prick me because none of them got sexually abused out of the bargain oh yeah this is where the story goes so i thought being a little shit of a kid i thought i know what i do because i knew where martin and terry lived just around the corner and i thought i know i'll pretend i thought the magic club was at six not seven when I get there, I'll be like, oh, what a shame. I thought it was earlier. I'll go around Martin's house and say, why isn't the club on? I'll say, ah, oh, well, it's actually seven. Do you want to come in and wait? And I'll go, yeah. And then I will. it'll be like a, an Aladdin's cave for an aspiring young magician with two pound a week and no real tricks. It worked. Textbook. Absolutely nailed it. I even bothered doing, you know, going through the procedure like I was a, a bank robber, you know, where you live it through beforehand. I don't know what that means, but I lived it through beforehand. So I went up there, smelt the piss and the burning dust. Oh, there's no magic club. Went round to Terry and Martin's house. Doof, doof, doof. Martin opens the door, about 22, terrible acne, greasy hair. Yeah, like a little yellow T-shirt with a picture of mushroom on. I won't ever forget that. You'll, you'll find that why. So he goes... Oh, hello. Uh, what do you want? And I said, oh, sorry, Martin. Martin run the uh, magic club. His dad sometimes turned up, and Martin was the real hero to these bunch of <laughs> nils, these bunch of beaters. <laughs> and uh, so he said, oh, no, the, the magic club isn't on right now. It's on at seven. Would you like to come in? And I thought, bingo, oh, you know, little cocky cunt. Oh, no, I've nailed it. I've gone in there, sat down, and he's and it was, like I said, like an Aladdin's cave. I could see linking rings, the big eight ring set. You know, wow, I had the, like the little £3.50 ones that didn't and, and, and dice boxes and, and illusions and like, everything, coin boxes and just, just everywhere. This was a house of two professional magicians who had no women in their lives. It was filthy. It, I, can, I remember it to this day. There was like food containers. There was like... Uh, I'll tell you what I saw, there was a, like a cereal box and a pint of milk and I think someone had just gone straight into the bag with the milk and eaten it out <laughs> there was a lot of spoon in the <laughs> yeah, no women it's, it's, it's easy, to, easy to see the old no women so anyway, we're sitting there and he comes and sits next to me but we're on a sofa and he's too close Almost, he's touching me, his leg is touching me and I'm like, oh, you know but I thought, you know, I've come this close and then he went, here, yeah, look and he put an industry magic magazine on my lap. Like, not, it wasn't magic. It didn't turn into doves. It was like a magazine about magic. And I was thinking, wicked. You know, I'm not meant to see this. You know, wait till I get back to the club. Be like, oh, yeah, I've been around Martin. So, yeah. Nah, just looking at industry mags, you know. You lot know nothing. Are you still, no, really? No, me and Martin were talking about Grand Dragons. Anyway, I'm hoping to flip through it and it gets to a porno mag. He stashed a porno in it. Now, this was 83. What I remember first, it was in black and white. Ooh! And it was all blokes. Uh, yeah. Now, as a like 11, 10, 11 year old, it was quite frightening, but really awkward more. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh. so I went, oh, no, no, I'm all right with that one. So I put it on the floor and he picked it up and put it back in. Didn't say a word. He just sort of put it back in the mag, and so I sort of went, nah, nah, you know, I'm, oh, I'm into the magic, really, put it down again. And then he picked it up and put it on his lap, and then he started rubbing himself. Now, this is the truth. I can tell you what carpet it had. I could pick it out of a book. I could tell you the wallpaper. It was like kind of a green flock like that with two lines and fleur de lis either side. I could pick it out of a wallpaper book. The ceiling was Artex. It was the basket with the fan. Incredible detail. Why do I know incredible detail? Why do I remember the spoon in the pack, which was, um, what are they, the Frosties? I could tell you everything. I'll tell you why, because I can't remember anything else. I don't remember the abuse. I focused on the environment. I know he touched me. I know he hurt me. 
Yeah, this has gone bad. I'm over it now, though. <laughs> Long time ago. But I don't remember leaving. That just, just a blank. I've got an almost photographic memory of the environment. This shapes, the colours, the themes, the patterns, the designs, tessellations, angles, smells. I can smell it now. But there's a big blank. The next thing I remember is I'm up at the Magic Club, standing outside. All the other beaters turn up. Ooh, boo, 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 boo. Oh, I've got the, uh, I, I bought the uh, Waddington's. It's a cycle deck. It's got the rough and smooth on it, so I can fan it. And, then... and I, I said to him, I said, no, 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 no. You've got to fuck this club off. Martin is a pedo. He's, he's just don't come here. No, they didn't buy it. Oh no, not Martin. I don't. I don't think so. And I can remember seeing him walking up all with all these spots. And hey, hey, you look, man. I just went. I see. Ya. Never went back. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, <laughs> I didn't have to think about it. Didn't get to next Tuesday. I was like, mm, it's a magic club tonight. Do I want to do that or stay in and watch Grain Jewel? <laughs> yeah, never. Heard. I, I, Anyway, there's a long, long story there. I, I done a show. I done a show about it. It was my last show in Edinburgh called Sex with Children, where you get the end of that story. So if you want to know that, maybe I'll tell it on here once. But you know, I've been over that ground a few times. However, there's more to tell you. So that's all that. That's the magic club. Blah blah blah. I don't really like stage illusions. Have you seen what's his name? Uh, the 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 the, the, <clears throat> the ones with the the animals. Oh, what the Siegfried and Roy? They've been performing with like snow leopards and fucking zebra tigers and God knows what for decades. And a few years ago, they were doing uh, da -da, with the you know the spangly kind of sequined gay outfits dun, 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 and the, their mad blonde mullets. And one of the tigers went get out and took his throat out. <laughs> Have a look online, it's brilliant. Siegfried says, I'll never, I'll never blame my tiger. No, and the tiger won't give a shit about you. It took half your neck out. I think he survived, though. I think he's still performing magic. <laughs> but I'm not into those stage illusions. I don't like all that. I don't like all... I like glamour in the bedroom, but I don't like it in magic. <laughs> However, because I'm a fan of Houdini and he was into stage illusions, but you can imagine it then. I mean, look at the picture, like chains and padlocks and, you know, all that nice old wooden structures like it would have been in those days. Not now, all that g glaring, gaudy old plastic and, and neon, and it's just a bit gross. But Houdini done a trick with his, um, I think it might have been with his wife, Beth. I don't know if it was an assistant or Beth, but it's called Metamorphosis. I don't think it was his, but he popularised it due to the speed he could perform it. And it's an awesome trick. I'll tell you what happens, and it's worth checking this out. Um, man, man goes, da 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 da, uh, woman puts some handcuffs on, she gets in a trunk, she gets in a sack, put the sack in the trunk, shut the lid. And then the man goes, da da da, stands on top of the trunk, picks up like a curtain, throws the curtain up, by the time it comes down, the woman's standing on the trunk, and then she opens the trunk and he's in the, it's a split second transformation even if you don't like conjuring even if you don't like stage illusions it's worth a look just for that that speed it's incredible i'm going to show you it now being done by the pen dragons now this is a couple of this is like 30 years old it looks cheesy but it's worth watching just for the actual metamorphosis bear with me because this this will be funny for you Right, too much of all that, but in fairness to them, they're only going for a little bit, look. So the mullet gets in the bag, so does that. Muscly woman ties it up. In fairness, this has been, what, 20 seconds? There you go. What's all that sort of staccato movement? It's just so unnecessary. Oh, what's with the leg? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not necessary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, even you're milking it. Bear with me. Right, so there's the curtain. Now watch this. He's in it, she's on top. See this live, yeah? This isn't live, look. Oh, my shitting God! <laughs> Let's have a look at that last bit one more time. Look, look. Oh my gosh! Now that's some trick, yeah? And of course, fast forward it, she's in the, uh, she's in the 
case. Come on, you've got the poor thing now. There you go. No time. They are, as expected. Right, and she changed her outfit. Quite amazing. So that's that. Now, when I was into magic, I used to go to a few, like, magic nights. Again, it weren't the night that was magic. <laughs> and they were awful. Same smell of piss. Same sort of radiators giving out dust and pneumonia. <laughs> and then this right tacky stage with, like, tinsel hanging down. And they'd go, next on stage is Brian. And this bloke come out, you know, roll up stains on his fingers and, like, bits of old food and that in his beard. About 80, never going to make it. He'd come out and he had this box that you put a few birds into the box and then it goes bang and the sides fall down and a balloon is there or something but the trick is that you put the birds in a little box underneath and this bloke on stage just stuffing these going, rah, rah. <laughs> and all the audience were like oh oh really uncomfortable rah, rah, like feathers coming off and <laughs> He was really having to stuff them in there. And then when it went bang and the sides fell down, he's gone, da -da, the music stops and all you could hear was the sound of five birds suffocating. <laughs> and everyone's like, ha, 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 ha. But and you met people in those. And these, these are ambitious people, weirdly. So you just saw that metamorphosis. I found a video of a weird couple doing this in their little house on the non-prairie. I want you to look out for the bloke's facial expressions. He keeps going. It's really weird. And watch how he fucks this up. And I want you to just indulge yourself in the tragedy of this scene. I mean, the woman, hot as hell. She's hot as hell, bless her. She's got this skimpy little glitzy outfit on. You can tell if he said, I'm going to give up the magic, love. She'd go, sweet, done today. This is not her project. 100%. Isn't it weird how you know that? This isn't her project. She's an ally. <laughs> She's a recruit to the cause. And they're never going anywhere. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's not all bad. But this is never leaving this front room. They're never going to make it. It's just not wanted. It can be done better. It's been done better and you can't do it. Let's check it out. Keep an eye on his face. <laughs> <laughs> YMCA, <laughs> young man. <laughs> I bet I'll get a fucking copyright claim for that. Hmm. Might have to keep talking over it to avoid the bots. Speaking of bots, look at her butts. <laughs> butts, plural. Keep up the yoga. Let's go. <laughs> well, that's me avoiding a copyright claim. Oh, fuck, right. I've overdone it, I fucked it up. Right, here we go. Right, so, check it out from here, look. Right, da -da -da, da -da -da. She's already in the box, yeah? Look, look at the fucking asshole he's having. Come on! <laughs> he's still trying to make it look good, yeah? Like, oh, like he lifts it up and down every time he opens one. <laughs> I would usually leave more silent because it's fallen over. <laughs> Just reshoot the video, you lazy fucker! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. She's in there suffocating. Imagine she comes out dead. <laughs> now watch. Remember how fast that last one was? Look at him. Look. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> oh, early exposure. Early exposure. Look, <laughs> really ruined. <laughs> The beauty of that trick is that bang. And he was like, boop, boop. <laughs> well, there you go. Conjuring. Magic. I was, uh, I met Darren Brown at a party recently, actually. And he's, he's got this weird thing. He's sort of, going like that. Maybe when he's nervous. Maybe because he felt like he was looking in a mirror. <laughs> Have a nice day. Be nice. Be nice! See, I thought I pressed up, I just pressed start on the video. Go!